What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 greatest rivals of Edge. His career by Parts for Unknown. Obviously, he goes by Adam Copeland in AEW, but when he was in WWE, he had some great rivals, fantastic feuds, and we're gonna go back down memory lane and see who they feel is Edge's greatest rival. Let's get right into this one. It should be a good one. Appreciate all love. You think board. you know him? All Let's right, you it. tell me his 10 greatest rivals then if you know him so well. Go on, let me see the comments. The artist formerly known as Edge is about to go on the run that will likely cap off his incredible wrestling career, and thus we thought it would be a good time to look back on the career of the rated R spooper star, Adam Copeland. Still not getting used to that anytime soon. Yeah. Of course, in one or two years time, we might be looking at an influx of AEW stars on this list, especially if that MJF picture ever resurfaces on TV. Mm -hmm. But for now, let's take a look back on the rivals that have meant the most to the career of my favorite wrestler of all time. I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 greatest rivals of Edge's career. But before we get on with our list, make sure, of course, that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun video just like it. Much like the return of Fantasy Booking Warfare here on Parts Fun Known. Check out this clip at the end of the video. Number 10, Christian. Mm. Currently, there is about a 50-50 chance that this entry could shoot up the list depending on what direction All Elite Wrestling goes yeah, in their current sure. story. Edge could end up having a fantastic rivalry with a Christian Cage that is on the run of his career, or they could end up teaming together once again as Copeland said he wanted to do in his uh -huh. AEW debut promo. As I list this list, however, there is only their WWE rivalry to work with, one that is shockingly short for how much weight it carries. Yeah. Maybe the greatest tag team of the Attitude Era, Edge and Christian had reached the heights they were going to reach by mid-2001 and began to go their separate ways with loads of teases and errant spears, particularly at SummerSlam. And then Christian joined the Alliance for some reason after faking a phone call from police saying their mom had been in an accident. Yeah, remember when these guys yeah. were brothers? Uh -huh. okay, WWE doesn't remember that either. <laughs> 2001 Invasion Bollocks aside, Christian and Edge had a fun little rivalry over the Intercontinental Championship, including a pretty darn good ladder match where Christian destroys his gooch. But while they never had the rivalry you think they would have had in WWE, their split helped give Edge his first major step up the card as a single star. If Christian brings up Copeland's dad, this is number one, though. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> Christian in... His uh, reliance on talking about dead fathers, just, just a menace. Number nine, Eddie Guerrero, the SmackDown Six, mm -hmm. the mortal enemies of Spider-Man united together in a wrestling <laughs> ring because Edge loves Spider-Man, you see. Anyway, there was a lot of anticipation for Edge and Eddie Guerrero to get in the ring together in 2002, and for very good reason. It may have taken a couple of very good pay-per-view matches to finally get their chemistry, but when they finally had their rivalry-defining no-DQ match on SmackDown, they hit the bullseye within the bullseye, resulting in one of the very best matches in SmackDown history. The rivalry continued in the tag division as the SmackDown 6 truly took form with Edge and Rey Mysterio taking on Los Guerreros, mm -hmm. resulting in more great TV, but Edge and Eddie's one-on-one -on -one battles only helped to elevate both men, and had Edge not injured his neck and stayed on SmackDown where he could have had even more matches with Latino Heat, yeah. I have no doubt this would be even higher on this list. Number 8, Kurt Angle. Speaking of the SmackDown, oh, this set, is good in too. the months leading he up to the brand split, to be on we this saw list. two of the future faces of SmackDown going toe to toe, nose to nose, flowing locks to bald head. <laughs> this was the shot in the arm that Edge needed as a single star after an underwhelming shampoo-based battle with Booker T at WrestleMania. At Backlash, Edge faced Kurt Angle, a man with whom he'd shared plenty of laughs and history with, including Edge beating him for the King of the Ring the previous year. And they had a match that to this day, I think is the best example I've ever seen of someone getting over in defeat. Mm. Edge tries his best in a fantastic match only to come up just short of Kurt Angle, one of the best in the world. It is a great piece of business made all the better when Edge got the win in their rematch the yep. following month at Judgment Day, maybe the best singles match Edge had during his first WWE run. Someone having their best match with Kurt Angle. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. This was a very <laughs> difficult list to make, as I had to put this feud with Angle at only number eight, despite how much I love it. But that just means Edge has had seven more incredible rivalries. This was even a good better one, for this. sure. Number seven, the Hardys and the Dudleys. I thought long and hard about how to incorporate these two teams. It, yeah, it, it only makes sense. They, come on now. Hardys, Dudleys, they, <laughs> if, you, if you had a best rivalry feud for either of the other teams you would have to put edge and christian on that list it, this was the dynamic of tag team wrestling all three teams it's just 
what are we talking about? <laughs> I was into this list before coming to the conclusion of F it. They're both on in one entry. While you can certainly look at the matches that Edge, Christian, and the Hardys had at No Mercy and Unforgiven, or the matches they had with the Dudleys at the Royal Rumble in isolation, in many people's eyes, this is a three-way feud between the teams that define not only the Attitude Era, but yep. a style of wrestling that the future generations of wrestling are still emulating. Yep. It wasn't a secret that these teams were insanely talented, but until they all got in the ring together at WrestleMania, their WWE legacies hadn't been defined. WrestleMania 2000, SummerSlam 2000, uh -huh. WrestleMania X7. Three uh -huh. absolutely insane matches, each more dangerous than the last. And they get a little bit of extra juice on this list because who won all three? Edge and Christian. Yep. It was in the feud with these two teams that Edge and Christian really came into their own as entertainers as well. The five second poses, crazy uh -huh. glasses and outfits all came to be because of all this. And honestly, it really is hard to say two of these teams without saying the third in the same breath. Yeah. Number six, yeah. Seth Rollins. Ooh, when Edge came back to- he re that, This is definitely a recent one. Seth and Edge, they've had some fantastic back and forth fantastic matches bro just chef's kiss just great wwe in 2020 the match at the top of everyone's dream match list for him was seth rollins not only because he had been one of the best in-ring performers in wwe of the last decade but also because of the lore when seth was the authority's golden uh -huh. goose it was edge's neck he threatened to break in order to coerce john cena into reinstating his superiors the wwe fans never forget and they wanted mm -hmm. to see edge get his revenge nearly seven years later when he and seth finally crossed paths so in good 21. So I can also say without question, this is the best rivalry of Edge's WWE tenure. It had plenty of great moments and promos, but the matches were absolutely Ooh. superb. Whether it be their SummerSlam banger, the rematch on SmackDown, Smackdown with Seth sending Edge off on a stretcher, or their rubber match inside Hell in a Cell. Yes. The first great blow-off Cell match in Lord knows how long, and the uh -huh. best Saudi Arabia match as well. All yep, <laughs> yep, without a doubt. Oh man, they just whoo, 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 so good. <laughs> Equal the best work Edge did post retirement. This is exactly the kind of thing I wanted to see when Edge came back, and Facts. I'm just a little bit sad we didn't get to see more like it. Yep. Number five, Randy of Orton. Of course. Before pandemic WrestleMania match aside, Edge and Randy Orton actually had really good chemistry together throughout their careers. Mm -hmm. They had feuds in 2004, 2007, yep. 2010, and 2020, and if that doesn't tell you how confident WWE was in putting them together, I don't know what will. And those rivalries took place at every step of their career journeys, as up-and-comers, emerging main events Eventers, established uh -huh. main eventers, and legends. The summer of 2004 saw Edge and Orton have some tremendously underrated clashes over the Intercontinental Championship, and then a couple of years later, United as rated yep. RKO against the common <laughs> enemy of DX before their rapid split. It was in those 2007 matches when both men had already been world champions that they once again could steal the show, having an awesome match the day after Backlash on Raw. And while I do think their 2020 rivalry gets memed on more than remembered fondly mm -hmm. for their slow walk around the performance center and the greatest match in the history of wrestling matches to ever happen anywhere in the universe, the promos and characters... Yeah, the greatest match ever, I think WWE kind of, they overcooked it. They could have just let it be what it was, but they overcooked it. They definitely overcooked it. Is it an enjoyable match? Sure. But they just overcooked it with calling it the potentially greatest match ever. Like, stop. When WWE gets a little heavy handed in their their promotions of, of promoting of matches and, and superstars and stuff like that, it comes off as not organic. They didn't have to do that. The greatest match ever. It was just like, bro, just let them have the match and let the fans decide that. Character work from both men prior to lockdown are absolutely worth remembering. Yep. Number four, Mick Foley. Ooh. When Edge won the WWE Championship for the first time, it was very clearly done to tie up the loose end of his Money in the Bank contract. He only had two months before Mania, and WWE had other plans, so he got a three-week run, and then it was back to Cena and Triple H. Yeah. This did not sit well with Edge, who had been waiting years for his big break, and focused that energy on his WrestleMania rivalry with Mick Foley. And shout out to Mick Foley for, once again, being the guy to get somebody over that much. Because obviously... You know, he won, you know, Edge won, would have loved to have been the champion going into WrestleMania or whatnot. But the fact that Mick Foley came in and was able to make Edge that much of a bigger star with the match they had at that year's WrestleMania, 
that it just extreme match they had. <laughs> Shout out to Mick, bro, for willing to do the job, put over someone else in a big way. You can put somebody else over, but Mick Foley found a way to make you seem like you was just unstoppable and you was on another level. And I appreciate Mick for always doing that for uh for other wrestlers. A rivalry that resulted in one of Edge's most mm. iconic WrestleMania Ooh. stealing performances. But this rivalry and match don't just get points for being iconic because, let's be honest, Edge has had f loads of iconic yeah. moments. It also gets points for the statement that it sent to When he was feeling a little bit timid and scared because he had to face The Undertaker and he brought out Mick Foley on SmackDown. I remember watching this and he was like, Mick Foley's like, yo, I need the guy that speared me through a flaming table. And he had to like transform because I believe he was going to have a hell in a cell match with The Undertaker. And it, it makes sense to have out Mick Foley. He knows The Undertaker pretty well when it comes to hell in a cell. So the fact that he was like just, he was kind of nervous and he wasn't sure of himself. And, and Mick Foley was able to bring out that fire. But in doing that, he destroyed Mick Foley before the match. He destroyed him on that SmackDown. Fantastic. What better way to motivate someone? Then actually destroying them in the process to get that that evilness out of you, man. It was great. The WWE. Edge would not be content to slip back down the card. He was going to continue to be as undeniable a main event talent as WWE had at the time, and Mick Foley was the perfect rival to prove that point with. Foley, who considered Edge the best wrestler in the industry at the time, took him into WrestleMania and had one of the most hardcore of hardcore matches Bats. ever to happen under the WWE umbrella, putting Edge into tax and falling through fire together on their quest to make a star. Number three, and they made Matt one Hardy. For sure. I think this is the first time that a tag team and a member of that tag team have featured separately on one of these lists, but in this case, Ooh, I think it is this absolutely is necessary. Now, there are a lot of things wrong with how all of this was handled. Their SummerSlam match is a bloodstained pile of trash that completely killed the audience's heat for mm -hmm. this real-life blood feud, but there are still good matches to come after. Mm -hmm. Their steel cage match at Unforgiven is probably Matt's biggest ever WWE win and a great match. For and sure. And Raw Street Fight and Ladder Match were also both fun. But honestly, this entry isn't even about matches or promos. These boys were just straight Beefing. Yeah. This is as real life a rivalry as you will mm -hmm. find on this list or on most lists for that matter. And even if it didn't always translate to great TV, it is still regarded by many as one of the most legendary rivalries Facts. of the ruthless aggression era. Number two. Yeah, bro. They that was real beef. And they still put on fantastic business. Real beef. And they still was able to say, you know, go out there and do what they had to do. Just saying, bro. Just saying. Real beef. <laughs> no, this wasn't made believe. They literally wasn't rocking with each other. So, I'm going to leave that there. <laughs> The Undertaker. It may be one thing to be taken seriously as a WWE main eventer. He deserves to be on this list as well. With a 15 month long storyline resulting in five pay per view matches, including a WrestleMania main event mm -hmm. with The Undertaker, that is when you truly know you have made it. Starting in 2007, Edge made Undertaker's life miserable at every turn. He cashed in money in the bank yep. in May, cost Taker the big gold belt inside Hell in a Cell at Survivor Series, yep. and cloned himself twice to ensure he became world champion at Armageddon all building to a main event clash at WrestleMania 24. This was, in many ways, the peak of the ultimate opportunist character, mm -hmm. always finding some way to eke out wins in matches he had no business winning until The Undertaker finally got him in a fair fight. Yep. That Mania match is highly underrated, resulting in Taker reaching 16-0, but they didn't stop there with Edge getting his win back in a TLC match before finally being dispatched to an yep. actual <laughs> Christian depiction of hell at SummerSlam. <laughs> Look at him being poked and prodded down there. <laughs> this is probably the greatest storyline that Edge had ever been part of in WWE, uh -huh. with Vicky Guerrero and La Familia backing him up, and it is pretty safe to say that for this 15-month window, Edge was the top heel in the company, feuding with the baddest babyface in the land to boot. Yep. And number one, John Cena. Of course John Boy had to be here. Of course. I was waiting for it. If he wasn't number one, I don't know who else would be. It, it, it has to be John Cena. <laughs> Edge's old shoe. John Cena and Edge both slot in as the other's top rival of all time and for very good reason. 
Edge could always get fantastic performances out of Cena at a time when not everyone could say that, and Cena elevated Edge to the main event level with an all-time classic feud. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much more legit can you get than Edge slapping John Cena Sr. and getting tossed in the Long Island Sound for his trouble? Yeah. Ignore their great SummerSlam and Unforgiven matches, that's real beef. This was Edge's first real chance to make it as a main event superstar, and he made the most out of it with WWE's hand-picked poster boy so that by the time they found their way back to each other in 2009, they were on more equal footing and able to play with years of backstory. Yeah. Edge's promo on Cena telling him that he hates him and everything he stands for is particularly hard-hitting while being almost scarily calm, but it all led to their climactic match in a last-man-standing match at Backlash, an actually good last-man-standing match. Match, yeah. Where Big Show exploded John Cena and Edge <laughs> went on his merry way. The only thing that would have made them even better rivals would have been them ending their WWE careers together. Yeah. But as we've seen, neither man is quite ready to hang up those old shoes yet. And that's our list. Please. Bro, I would have loved. I would have. Man, I would have loved if we could have got an Edge and John Cena one more time, bro. One more time. I would have loved it. Would have loved it. I'm being dead serious. Not as a retirement match. You know what I'm saying? I, I I don't feel like that needs to be a retirement match. I feel like if someone has a retirement match, it should be, you know, unless both wrestlers plan on retiring at the time, it should be a younger star that potentially retires someone else. Uh, you know, the, the seasoned veteran. But I would have just loved for them to just have one more go around. And it didn't have to be anyone uh, being a heel or a baby face. It's just one more go around to see who's the best. I, I think that 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 match alone, just the history, just the, the, the back and forth they have with each other and where they are in their lives now and how much more they've matured and grown, that, that match would have easily sold. That's a main event pay-per-view match for any damn near show. Edge, John Cena, one more time to see who's the best. Man, that would have been fantastic. Would have loved it. And you know who I would have gave the win to? I would have gave it to Edge. John Cena, he's solidified. But I would have gave that match to Edge. I know some people, oh, I would have gave it to John Cena. Nah, I would have gave it to Edge. So, that's just, that's just my dream scenario. We'll probably never get it, but hey... I wish we would have. But comment down below. Let me know who do y'all feel like is Edge's greatest rival. Honestly, between The Undertaker and John Cena, I'm going to probably have to agree with the list. John Cena is, without a doubt, Edge's greatest rival. It involved the WWE Championship. Edge was really in the main event consistently. When he had his own custom belt, the Rated R Superstar belt, that's when I knew okay, they're definitely going with this guy going forward because they got rid of John Cena's spinner belt and put the Rated R Superstar logo on the spinner, on the spinner itself, and they ran with that. I was like, okay, yeah, he is actually, they're, they're, they're pushing this guy as a main event talent, and the back and forth they had was fantastic. So that's who I feel like is his greatest rival as well but y'all let me know how y'all feel who do y'all feel is his greatest rival of all time but i appreciate all the love and support guys shown on channel rose 150k and i'm still getting the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace